Hey guys, um, so I've had a lot of people ask me if I would tell a bit, a little bit more about my Lyme journey, and I guess I've just assumed that everybody has been along this Lyme journey with me, but there's a lot of people that are on the Lyme journey still, and still don't know how to get relief from it. Um, in April 2009, um, I was a surgery nurse coordinator at that time. I had started getting some really bad headaches, some fevers. I figured I just had had some weird virus. I had just started as a nurse coordinator for Springfield Clinic at that time for the surgery department. And I figured I just came down with something. I was starting a new job, it was opening. So I'd get up at three o'clock in the morning to get to work. So I figured the stress had just maybe caused me to get some type of virus. So I kind of put up with that for about a week or two and then realized that there was something more serious going on. My fingers started to claw. And at that point, um, my nurses got one stick with an IV and then I had to go put the IVs in. And I literally would have to straighten my fingers just to be able to go start an IV. So at that point, I began to get a little bit more concerned about what was going on. Um, then my toes started hurting. And I thought, well, gosh, is this rheumatoid? You know, what, what's going on? This is really strange. But then I started having some confusion, like things I had done. I've been a nurse for 26 years, and things that I have done for 26 years, I suddenly couldn't figure out what I was doing. And then I noticed I started walking into like door jams on the left side, like almost like I had some left-sided neglect, um, something we'd see maybe in a stroke patient. So that got me a little bit concerned as well. But like I said, I just had started a new job, so I was nervous about losing the job that I really loved. So I kind of just pushed through it. The headaches got worse, then I started having vertigo. Um, there'd be numerous times driving back and forth to work that um, the center line would be moving and I'd have to literally pull a car over to throw up on the way to work. And uh, my nurses, some of the nurses that were really close to me would say, hey, your, your pupils are starting to bounce. We call that nystagmus, when the pupils start to bounce back and forth. And that's usually what happens with vertigo. And they would say, you need to sit down, You're starting to, your pupils are starting to bounce. So not only did I have the headaches, but I had daily fevers. Um, at that point, my fevers were running 100.2 100, 100 to 100.7 every day. And it was every afternoon about 2 o'clock. It was the same time every day that the fevers would start going up. So at this point, I finally went to the doctor. I said, you know, something's going on. Um, she, the doctor that I went to knew that I lived in the timber. I spent a lot of time in the timber. So they did check a Lyme test at that point. Um, and I was called with the results and they said it was that was negative. So we just assumed that I that I did. I just had some weird virus and it was gonna have to run its course. Fast forward another few weeks, our daughter was getting ready to graduate from high school and uh, I barely remember her graduation. The brain fog had started getting really bad. The fatigue was just uh, something you just can't even imagine. Holding your body up in an upright position was was a chore. You physically wanted to lay down or you needed to lay down to be able to hold yourself up. So there was something major going on. Unbeknownst to me, my mother, who was still living at that time, and my husband called my doctor and said something, something seriously wrong. We had taken the tables and chairs back to the church after the graduation party and to hold the door open, I literally had to lay my body in front of the door to hold the door open. I, I couldn't stand to even hold the door open. So there, there was something from somebody that had mowed, landscaped. Uh, yeah, I worked to work all the time, you know, full time, and did all these things on the side. There's something was seriously going on. So I went to the doctor. They were getting ready to close. So I was the last patient of the day, so the front door had been locked. So my husband couldn't get in when he got there. Um, but they printed off my lab results, and as they looked through them, they realized that the Lyme tests were positive. This was six weeks later. So by that time, the Lyme had already gone systemic, meaning it had gone to my brain, it had gone to my heart. Um, and at that point, Lyme hides out then, so it's harder to treat. Um, if you can treat Lyme in the early week or so of Lyme, with, within 48 hours, we prefer, they can usually take care of it. But if you let Lyme go that long, it's hard to control, and it actually can lay dormant in your body. And I believe that's probably what's happened right now. I believe that my immune system has kicked back in with the plexus and that it is laying dormant. But I do know that with any stresses or any sickness that I can get that to come back up. So I, I try to be very careful with um, making sure that I, my body's healthy at this point. 
Um, along with the vertigo, the vomiting, I had trouble swallowing. It was like a, like a stroke patient. You'd put a pill or something in your mouth or a piece of food. And it's almost like my brain had to think about what I needed to do to swallow. I couldn't think to swallow. So a lot of times I would end up choking on it or I'd have to spit it out because I just, I couldn't, I didn't know how to swallow at that point. Short-term memory was a huge thing. I was so embarrassed to tell people, you know, they'd tell me, oh, call me next week, we'll go to lunch. And then maybe they'd call me the next week and say, you didn't call. I had, I had no idea. I didn't, I didn't remember anybody ever saying that to me, but I didn't want to be that person that was sick. So I tried my best to put on a front that, that I was well and that um, I was trying my best to cope with what I, what I was dealt. The, the joint pain was just intense. Um, many nights, it'd be two or three o'clock in the morning, I'd be up soaking Epsom salts just to try to ease the pain. I uh, used Tiger Balm, many liniments trying to get the pain under control. I used kinesiology tape. It was kind of a joke with my husband that I was taped together. So if I ever died in the middle of the night to at least remove the tape before the coroner came out to pick me up. So um, the muscle rigidity, um, very few people, um, you know, Tim Rodas, my dad, uh, mom, while she was passing, of course, she was too sick to know. And my husband uh, were the other few that really even saw the muscle rigidity and the Parkinson's like movements that I had. I tried not to go out in public when I was that severely ill. Um, the bruise feeling to the bottom of my feet. You, when you wake up in the morning, that's a, a co-infection called Bartonella. So you wake up in the morning and you put your feet on the floor. It feels like somebody's taken a ball bat and beat the bottom of your feet. So uh, that, that pain was constantly there. The getting lost. I'd go to Walmart and I learned very quickly that I'd have to park in the same spot. And I still do today out of habit. But I literally would walk out of there and have no idea where I was at or how I got there or how to get back home. So a very scary feeling when you know that you should know what to do, but, but your brain isn't functioning at its optimum and you can't find your way home. I ended up with a neurogen, uh, neurogenic bladder. Uh, you know, at 48 years old to have to sit on the stool and cath yourself is a very, um, a very humbling, very emotional thing to have to think that you're gonna spend the rest of your life doing. And I was told by the doctors that you know, this is just something that you're going to have to do. And I guess I didn't realize when we tell patients that, you know, the emotion that goes with that, you know, I, I was a nurse and this was so difficult for me, but yet how many times that I taught a patient how to cath themselves and thought it was just going to be okay for them, but it's not okay. It was not okay to leave me that way. I ended up with a SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Uh, so I, my colon pretty much shut down. I ended up looking like I was about seven months pregnant. And this was right before um, the plexus actually come in my scene. It was probably five, six months I struggled with the SIBO. Went through three doctors and nobody being able to tell me what was going on with me. Um, of course, my mother died of pancreatic cancer. My grandmother died of pancreatic cancer. And I had had melanoma, so they already told me my risk of pancreatic was very high. So when you have a bloated abdomen and um, they do a CT scan, they see something on the left upper peritoneum. Of course, we were very nervous for many months of what was going on, and nobody could tell us what was going on. Luckily, I have a very good friend that is a surgeon out in Colorado, and I sent her my symptoms. I sent her pictures of my abdomen, and she knew right away. She said, you have SIBO. I'm going to order some tests, get you tested. And sure enough, I had a methane form of SIBO, which is the hardest one to treat, which has now been controlled with the plexus, which is amazing that it can even control that. Um, these are some of my labs from All That Pink is Positives that was a positive for Epstein-Barr virus. So the Epstein-Barr virus, um, a negative is 0 0.90, and I had three different bands of Epstein-Barr. Uh, one index was 5.04, one was 6.42, and one was 2.59. Um, I was tested positive for chlamydia and pneumonia, mycoplasma pneumonia, Bartonella, babesiosis, and the Lyme. We're all positive on that one. So if you can see, uh, CDC considers five bands positive on your Lyme testing. So those were my bands that were positive. There's 19 bands that were positive for the Lyme at that time. Um, that was not the original report she got, um, but my doctor got a report that was actually a, a written report. Um, and it was many pages. So that was how it got missed. It was just in the, in the writing. So that was how it got missed. So fast forward till um, April of this year. Oh, I also actually had POTS too, which um, I don't know if you know, POTS is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. So many of you tried to walk up to me at Walmart and try to talk to me 
and I got a panic look on my face, it was because standing in one position with POTS is your, your heart rate goes really high, but your blood pressure bottoms out. So you either pass out or you feel like you're gonna pass out. So if you talk to me at Walmart, I apologize, but I was more focused on trying to stay upright than trying to talk to you. So, and plus with the brain fog and the confusion, it was really hard to figure out what was going on. So for all those many years, I, I do apologize, but um, I think people do need to know what a Lyme patient does go through. Um, it, is, it is a hell, it is an unbelievable hell. I was told that there was really nothing they could do except to manage my symptoms. Um, and I'm thinking this is just no way to live. Um, many times I had told my husband that I can't do this anymore. And I think I, I, I would say that, but none of us really mean that. But come April, I was in bed with a vertigo and vomiting for two solid days. Bill was changing my ice packs out every few hours, um, trying to help control the vertigo. I was taking Finnergan, Zofran, 16 milligrams, um, Meclizine, anything that they could give me to try to just knock me out to reset my system, but it just was not working. So I had actually uh, signed up for the Plexus over a year ago, and it had set on my kitchen countertop. That's bad to say, but... I just figured how could something GI help my Lyme disease? I just, I just couldn't see that it was gonna be the, the solution to helping my Lyme. So it actually sat on my countertop for a year. So I had said to him, you know what? I have nothing, I have nothing else to lose. Yeah, I'm gonna try it, see what happens. I started taking the product. When you have Lyme and you start a new antibiotic, they know that you have the right antibiotic if you have what we call a Jarish Herxheimer reaction. What a Jarish Herxheimer reaction is is the die off of the Lyme. So as the Lyme dies off, you actually get sicker with all the toxin in your body. So until your body gets rid of that toxin, you're actually at a sicker state. So they know that that's the right antibiotic. When I started this, the Slim and the BioCleanse and the ProBio5, I got really, really sick for about a week. So in my mind as a nurse and as a Lyme patient, I knew something was seriously going, this was working, something was happening. So I stuck through it. Um, it, it was a horrible week and a half. I remember calling Megan my upline and saying, I just don't know if I can do this. Uh, Sister Kate was always my cheerleader when I went through my die-off reactions. You know, she, she'd say, we're going to get through this. It's okay. We'll make it through this. She, she actually rehabbed me walking down the driveway. Um, I was so extremely weak and could not walk that she walked me down the, down the driveway up and down with a stroller, a baby stroller, uh, for quite a while trying to get me to walk again. So I did that to get my uh, energy back and my strength back. So I started taking the, the Triplex, which is the Slim, the ProBio5, and the BioCleanse. Within a week and a half, I got out of bed that morning. I stepped on the, on the floor, and I noticed that my feet weren't bruised. For the first time in nine years, I didn't have that feeling that somebody beat the bottom of my feet. And then all of a sudden, it dawned on me that my head was clear. I, I could actually think clearly for the first time in nine years. So I got out of bed that day. I started doing things. I noticed my energy was, was so much better. I was not tired. I was not um, just weary from, from anything that I tried to do. Um, I went down the stairs and brought laundry up. That was a feat for me. I couldn't breathe if I tried to carry laundry up and down the laundry stairs. So to be able to take laundry up and down the stairs and be able to breathe was just something. So fast forward four months, I'd been on the, the Slim and the ProBio and the BioCleanse, and I did add Vital Biome, which is a lot of the probiotics my system fast forward uh, to now which is four months later I now work out with a um, personal trainer a couple days a week um, doing free weights um, I was walking eight miles a day um, she recommended during my training to cut that down to four to five miles a day because of my training so I'm walking the four and five miles a day and doing the free weights with my trainer I feel better than I've ever felt I have more energy than I've ever had I sleep all night, I do take four BioCleanse at night, and most of you that are on it think, oh my God, four BioCleanse, she's gonna be in the bathroom all day. Well, yes, you do have a nice clean out in the morning, but you sleep really good at night. BioCleanse is oxygenated magnesium. Magnesium is a smooth muscle relaxer, so um, it actually will put you to sleep and you will sleep awesome. So I do take the four BioCleanse at night to help me sleep, and I have never slept so well. So I am out doing things like, I wanted to do, I can think clearly again. I, I have a passion for life now. I get up every day, I enjoy every day. I don't take any day for granted anymore. So um, I just wanted to share that. I know there's so many people out there. I'm finding more and more 
you know, people say, uh, how can you support something like this as an MLM company? And I really struggled with that at first. I thought, you know, I'm just, I'm just not into that type of stuff. But when I saw what it did for my health, and then I started doing research, and I don't know if you can see this, but this is all medical research I've been doing on the microbiome and what the microbiome does for cystic fibrosis, for MS, for autism, for Lou Gehrig's disease, for all kinds of things. Your microbiome of your gut is your immune system. And if that immune system is not reset, your body cannot fight. So in essence, what I did was I reestablished the microbiome in my gut and I just reestablished my immune system. The, the phone calls that I get, the texts I get, the private messages that I get, um, I'm a nurse, so I expect people to be honest with me, and, and people have been very honest with me about the struggles that they are struggling. There's a lot of people struggling quietly you know, with inflammation, with pain, with confusion, with fatigue, brain fog. Um, I ask you, please don't, please don't, don't struggle. There is no reason. I've had somebody call me that has been sick for a year, and their doctor said, nope, you're fine, you're better, and this poor person was almost put in a mental institution, and I, I just I wanted to cry for them. You know, there, there is no reason for that. You can be healthy, and there is a way to get healthy. So I just ask that you reach out, um, if not to me, to somebody that you know that, that does take the Plexus products. Please reach out. It is so important to me as a nurse that, you know, that we begin healing at the gut level. Um, I have so many diabetics now that are off their medicines. I, I, I can't tell you the joy as a nurse when you have diabetic patients that their kidneys are being damaged, their livers being damaged, their heart, their eyes from their up and down of their blood sugars now saying that if they're off their insulin, they're off of their oral diabetic medications, um, blood pressure medicines off. I, I was considered malignant hypertension at 200 and some over 120s and 130s. I now take no prescription medications whatsoever. My blood pressure runs 110 over 170 or 110 over 70s now, and I'm, I, I'm doing great. So matter of fact, my cardiologist gave me a high five and said, continue doing what you're doing. So um, I actually had blood work done. My, my bleeding times, I used to bruise really easy with my Lyme. My bleeding times have went up by almost 100,000. So I'm not bruising like I did before. My hemoglobin even went up by a whole unit of blood, which my hemoglobin really wasn't low, but for it to go up by a whole unit of blood was kind of stunning that, that this could take you up by a whole unit of blood. Um, my uh, CD57 count, which is your immune system, went from a low 57. So I, I had no immune system to now it's a normal 175. So it's just crazy that um, what this can do. I have one patient that is a um, thrombocytic uh, cytopenia patient. She has a bleeding and clotting disorder. Her platelets were always running very low. Um, she ended up having to have IVIG infusions and steroids. And now her counts are at 200,000 normal. And the doctor first walked in and said, are you seeing somebody else? Well, what are you doing? Are you, are you, you're doing some other treatment. And they kind of held out on him for a while, and the counts have been staying over 200,000 now. So it's just awesome to see blood work change. Cholesterol levels on numerous people that I have this on, that their cholesterol levels are now down the normal range, and they're able to get off the statin drugs, which I love because I hate statin drugs. So I hope this helps that um, people understand Lyme a little bit better, what Lyme patients go through and what our treatment is and what we actually try to hide from so many people that I know many of my close friends said it's not fair that you went through that alone, but I did not want to be that person. So I hope that helps. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post them and I'll try to get to them.